I get messages constantly, many of them former Calvinists who have come out of Calvinism now talking about the psychological effect that Calvinism had on them because of its deterministic claims. Um, of wondering whether they're truly elect because they still struggled with sin and why would an elect person struggle with sin unless God ordained for them to struggle with sin. We're just the cue ball that goes and hits, you know, the, the, the seven into the right corner pocket. And really, that, that's probably giving ourselves too much credit. We're probably the seven ball that gets hit by the cue ball, that gets hit ultimately by the cue stick, which is ultimately guided by the person playing pool. You and I are doing something. We are. But we're doing something because God is working in us. Notice even his illustration is causal determinism. Reducing human responsibility to mere billiard balls. Now, I remember... I think it was Eric Hernandez. It may have been Braxton Hunter. One of my friends was on the program and he used the billiard ball illustration as an illustration for determinism. And I remember getting Calvinists on the side chat saying, oh, that's a gross misrepresentation of Calvinism, blah, 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 blah. Or the domino, there was dominoes also used as one illustration. Braxton, I know, uses dominoes at times. And Calvin, oh, that's just a gross misrepresentation of our, here is an actual Calvinist using that illustration. <laughs> this has happened several times, by the way, the whole, uh, the lion analogy that I use with the, the fact that lions choose to eat meat over uh, grass because of the way God created them, and and Calvinists, oh, that's just not that's not what we're saying. That's a bad that's a bad analogy. And then I play Jeff Durbin using that exact same analogy in one of his messages describing human uh, nature and sinfulness. Um, th this often happens is is that um, that we can try to represent Calvinist in vernacular they even use for themselves. And for some reason, we can be accused, uh, nonetheless, of misrepresenting them. But it, his analogy gives a perfect representation of what Calvinism really is. Determinism is that really your actions are no more significant and meaningful than that of a billiard ball being bounced off of another billiard bar, but ball because God has causally determined what will happen in any given circumstance and situation. You have no real will of your own, but yet you're going to be punished. Imagine grabbing that seven ball off the table and imagine it having feelings and emotions and real pain and then going and punishing it for bouncing off of the eight ball when it wasn't supposed to. Imagine the guy that hit the ball, the one who caused the seven ball to bounce into the eight ball to knock it in, punishes the seven ball for doing this. And you're going, oh, well, that's absurd. That would be absolutely ridiculous. Exactly. This is why Calvinism has produced so much controversy within the church. It's why so many people leave scratching their heads when they hear it, because determinism, as William Lane Craig is quoted as saying, is a dizzying, a vertigo sets in when you really begin to talk about theistic determinism and mankind not having a, a meaningful, significantly uh, autonomous will from that of their maker. And again, one. This is one of the reasons I think that we have to push back on this kind of theology. It, it can be, it's not always, but it can be, be detrimental. I, I cannot tell you, I don't read them because I, I don't want to violate people's privacy and I don't want to um, you know, post things online that, that I haven't been given the permission to do so. Um, but I get, I get messages constantly, many of them former Calvinists who have come out of Calvinism now talking about the psychological effect that Calvinism had on them because of its deterministic claims um, of wondering whether they're truly elect because they still struggled with sin. And why would an elect person struggle with sin unless God ordained for them to struggle with sin? And, and, and not being able to stop sin because they continue to uh, fall into temptation thinking to themselves, well, either it's, not, it's because I'm not elect or because God has determined me as a Christian to act this way. And they're, instead, instead of really dealing with the, the root cause of the sin, they, they even subconsciously blame it on God because that's what determinism ultimately does. Even when Calvinists go around saying, no, 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 you're not supposed to blame it on God, but yes, our system ultimately does blame it on God and his eternal decree. And I think that's the, the destruction of this kind of, of philosophy and way of thinking. All right, let's move along. And that brings up the, what, what you would call in philosophical terms an, an apparent paradox. It's not a true paradox because the laws of non-contradiction are God's laws. God does not contradict himself, but there are things that appear to be a paradox. And in one of the big, giant, apparent paradoxes within the Christian faith that we find within the Bible is this. Human responsibility 
and God's sovereignty. Not a paradox if you don't define sovereignty as determinism, Joel. It's really that simple. This is the same paradox that we've read a thousand times. Many of you probably have it memorized. Uh, for those that watch this program regularly, you think, well, we, we've heard this before. We've heard that before. I don't do this video for those who watch on a consistent basis, just so you know. I do this video for people who are tuning in from Joel's church or from um, other places that are looking at, oh, I want to know about what John Piper teaches on this. or John. And so a lot of these things, because it's, it's a centralized doctrine, are going to be repetitive. And we're going to go over some of the same things more than once because Calvinism, being determinism, is going to have some repetitive things. And that's one of the reasons I, I use this quote as an illustration of the namesake of the system saying exactly what you heard Joel just now say. How it was ordained by the foreknowledge and decree of God what man's future was without God being implicated as an associate in the fault as the author of the prover of transgression is clearly a secret so much excelling the inside of the human mind that I am not ashamed to confess ignorance. I daily so meditate on his mysteries of his judgments that curiosity to know anything more does not attract me. Again, from John Calvin, what's he saying? It's a paradox. It's an antinomy. It's an apparent contradiction. We can't get it. Yes, God determines your choices, but he holds you responsible for your choices. Yes, the, the pool player hit the seven ball and made it cause, caused it to, to hit the eight ball into the pocket, but it's still the seven ball's fault. We're going to take the seven ball out and we're going to punish it severely because of what it did that I caused it to do. And you may think, that is absurd, that is a ridiculous. Prove that that is not what Calvinism is saying by looking at the best of their best scholars in their actual words. As I have on this program over and over and over and over and over again, all the while being accused by the other half of Calvinists that I'm not representing Calvinism correctly. And I'm just telling you, it's not a hard system to represent correctly because it's determinism. It is God determines what you ultimately, what your nature will be from birth by divine decree or what it will be by rebirth if he's chosen you unilaterally before you were born. That is just determinism. And the effects of determinism, whether Calvinists like it or not, are demonstrably bad for the church and human responsibility and personal uh, spiritual growth and uh, sanctification. And we see this again and again and again demonstrated on this program again and again and again how psychologically this affects people and this impacts the way in which people live their lives when they begin to live consistently within the claims of a particular theological system.